So this right here is the Axon 30 ZTE second stab at a smartphone featuring an under display selfie camera following on from last year's Axon 20 which was certainly innovative uh, but a bit of a mixed bag shall we say. That camera was rather poo. As well as more secretive selfie shenanigans, the ZTE Axon 30 also boasts impressive specs including a whopper of an AMOLED screen, Snapdragon 870 power and 65 watt fast charge and offer just 429 quid here in the UK. It'll be available from September the 9th direct from ZTE. So is the ZTE Axon 30 more successful at sneaking away that selfie sensor? Well, I'm going to whip it on out of the box, take you on a full on tour of the hardware and the software. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So in the box, you get one ZTE Axon 30, a big old beefy 65 watt power adapter, some type C to type C USB cable action, Get a free pair of earphones bundled in there, although they are of the ear scratching variety. And I had high hopes because I saw they were proper 3.5mm earphones instead of Type-C USB. But unfortunately, you do also get a uh, Type-C to 3.5mm dongle bundled in there. So no headphone port on the ZTE Axon 30, boo hiss. But then all is mostly forgiven because ZTE has bundled a free condom case with the Axon 30, although it's quite a stiff one for now for now. And that's your wax, so let's check out the phone. So first impression is, wow, the ZTE Axon 30 is chuffing massive. It's got a near 7-inch screen. So yeah, it's a bit of a hand filler, but also surprisingly light at just 189 grams and reasonably slender to boot. And I've got to say, I'm quite liking the styling here on the Axon 30 as well. It's a glass back. I don't believe it's Gorilla Glass, unfortunately, so I can't testify right now as to its durability. Uh, but certainly you get a good bit of styling on there, plenty of interesting little design elements that help it to stand out. It's probably one of the more attractive smartphones around this sort price point. There's quite a lot of Brandon, uh, but it doesn't look quite as in your face, quite as garish as some of the Poco uh, Brandon, for instance. And yes, it does like to point out that it is a 5G already smartphone. The full official title is actually the ZTE Axon 30 5G, but I refuse to say 5G anymore because pretty much every smartphone these days is bloody 5G. It's quite a shiny back end, does seem to pick up smudges uh, quite easily, uh, although at least this black model seems to hide them reasonably well as well. You can also pick it up in aqua if you want something a little bit less moody, a little bit less somber. And I've got to say, despite the gargantuan size of this thing as well, the Axon 30 does feel quite comfortable to clutch. It's got curves in all the right places places. Uh, it's going to get it all set up now, take you on a full-on tour of the rest of the hardware. And while we're setting it up, let's see uh, what the state of the SIM tree is. And it looks like you've got a dual SIM setup, although you can alternatively use that second SIM slot to house a micro SD memory card to expand the onboard storage. All right, so the ZTE Axon 30 5G is all set up and ready for action. And naturally, it's a good bit of Android 11. Although what you get slathered on top of that is MyOS 11. Now, thankfully, the MyOS launcher retains that sort of stock Android vibes. You've got the Google Discover feed there. If you want it, you can drag down the notifications bar, which hasn't changed up too much. You've got an apps tray to stash away all your goodies. You don't have to have them slathered all over your desktops. And you can customize the general look and vibe. Add your own very geeky anime wallpaper on the go, for instance, that'll change up the transitions. Dive on into settings. You can play around with the grid layout, all that good stuff. But of course, like most launches, this adds a buttload of bonus features to good old Android. So for instance, you've got the Z Pop tool. This is just your usual uh, customizable shortcuts offering. I'm not really much of a fan of these things, but it's there if you want it. And you've also got bugger tons of gesture support as well. So the usual raise to wake, all that shenanigans. Got a bit of shake to turn on the flashlight. So apparently shake back and forth twice. Yep, that definitely works. And don't look directly at the flash because it's surprisingly powerful. There is also a fingerprint sensor built into that mighty display here on the ZTE. Axon 30 and Touchwood so far seems reasonably responsive uh, and dependable so just give it a bit of a tappy tap and you're pretty much straight into your desktops and you do also have face recognition as well using that cunningly concealed selfie shooter as well so like a bit of raise to wake it'll search for you and seems so far Touchwood to actually be pretty fast and responsive. And also, having covered the ZTE Axon 20 from last year, I can definitely say the ZTE Axon 30's display seems to be a step up. You can just about make out that tiny little box where the selfie camera resides, right there in the center of the top edge of the display. But it is very well concealed compared with last year. You can only really obviously see it when you tilt the screen well away from your face. One of the problems with the original Axon 20 was that that section of the screen only had 200 pixels per inch, so it was quite pixelated. You don't get the same garish pixelation here on the ZTE Axon 30 though, because it's now been boosted to 400 pixels per inch, while the brightness and the color output is also much closer now to the rest of the screen. 
And what a screen as well, as I mentioned before, it's a chuff and massive 6.92 inch AMOLED display, 20.5 by 9 as well, so almost that full on stretched cinematic uh, aspect ratio, which is perfect when you're kicking back with a good bit of Netflix, Disney Plus, whatever you fancy. It's a full HD plus resolution, 2460 by 1080, so nice crisp uh, visuals, despite the fact that obviously this thing is freaking gargantuan. On the default color settings, you do get quite natural looking images for an AMOLED screen, those colors aren't too punchy or poppy, but you can boost that up if you prefer. You do have a full 10 bit color reproduction, so very lifelike visuals indeed and sadly no HDR streamer support though in the likes of Netflix just yet. The screen certainly seems nice and bright as well if you boost all the way up to that top level you'll have no worries whatsoever seeing that even on an incredibly sunny day uh, which you're probably not going to get here in the UK for a while you've got the usual night light settings and everything if you dive on into the screen refresh rate as well you can see it's a dynamic refresh rate uh, but you can boost that to the maximum 120 hertz full time if you prefer. No stereo speaker setup here on the ZTE Axon 30. Sadly, it is just a single bottom fire and mono speaker, but let's boost up the volume, see if it's any good. 6.7 inch OLED panel here on the Edge 20 Pro. It's a full HD plus resolution, not quad HD plus, like some flagship rivals, but still reasonably crisp as well, despite the sheer size of the bloody thing. So fairly loud and clear on that top volume, but also quite tinny as well, has to be said. So if you want to really enjoy your music, your movies, whatever, you want to plug in some headphones, either using that infernal bundle dongle thingy, otherwise get a good bit of Bluetooth action on the go. And if you jump on into the sound settings, you'll see you've got a good bit of DTS sound uh, support here, including DTSX Ultra, if you've got supported headphones for that sort of surround sound experience. You could also tweak the audio to suit whatever you happen to be up to and set up your own uh, custom audio preferences as well. And you can also set up your own listening profile. Now, absolutely no worries on the performance front because the ZT Axon 30 is powered by that same Snapdragon 870 chipset you'll find packed in the likes of the Poco F3. So this thing is an absolute demon. As you can see, they're great single and multi-core scores in the old geek bench if you're a benchmarking fan. Apps just seem to load up instantly. And if you're a gamer, well, great news. You can get really demanding titles like Genshin Impact on the go on the highest detail settings at 60 frames per second. Nice buttery smooth performance there. I didn't really see any judders or shudders or stumbles at all even with a proper full-on half hour session and the great news is that because it's a Snapdragon 870 chipset as well that meant that the ZT Axon 30 stayed pleasingly cool even throughout a fairly intensive session lots of smashing of slimes and falling off of high things and the fact that this thing stays so cool under pressure is definitely helped along by the fact that you've got a dedicated cooling system built into here by ZTE as well so that consists of the likes of a vapor chamber you've got a graphene layer and you've got some proper heat conducting gel in there just to help help dissipate all of that pesky hot air and keep it from getting your mobile all hot and bothered. Once again, I really enjoyed that full view experience while I was gaming here on the Axon 30 as well. That selfie camera stays well hidden out of view at all times. And you've got 360 hertz touch response rate here on the Axon 30 as well. So that means that every poke and swipe and everything is just immediately registered. So keeps you competitive in these really fast paced action games. The only thing is you don't seem to have any dedicated gaming tools or a gaming mode of any description here on the Axon 30, which is a feature which is quite often added in uh, by your various launches. Uh, so that is a bit of a shame, a bit of a miss here. So you can block your notifications easily. You just have to like manually stick it on do not disturb all that kind of shenanigans. Apart from that, really good though, you've got built in 5G support on that Snapdragon 870 as well and for Wi-Fi 6 support as well so again connectivity really strong some solid specs for this price point and while that 4200 milliamp battery packed into the ZT Axon 30 isn't one of the biggest around certainly at this sort of price point it seems to be doing the job all right I've only lost 20% battery and the entire time I've been doing this hands-on session and playing a good bit of Genshin Impact streaming lots of Netflix and Disney Plus in that time as well so I reckon this thing will see you through a full day no worries and you've also got 65 watt fast charging support as well where you finally do drain the bugger as well so if you do find yourself running out of juice you can just stick it in the plug 10-15 minutes you'll have a good amount of battery life to keep you going for the rest of the day and last up let's have a look at the ZT Axon 30's camera tech this time starting with that 16 megapixel selfie sensor which is hidden away under that display now while ZTE did a reasonable job of hiding away that under display selfie camera on the Axon 20 the problem was when you actually came to use it it wasn't very good to be perfectly honest it was a big bag of wank and so to really put the ZT Axon 30 through its paces I decided to go out and about and just shoot a, a few selfies in varying conditions you know some strong light some low light uh, more ambient stuff as well uh, just to see how it would cope so here's the photos that I did take on my travels and I did also shoot a nice bit of video action 
and this is a full HD video shot using that selfie camera while just wandering my merry way along the snuttle embankment and uh, hopefully um, come through reasonably clear seems to be alright on the, uh, the old display although I have had three pints so it's all subjective way and if you flip around to the back here on the ZT Axon 30s arse end, you've got a distinctly less hidden quad lens camera setup headed up by a 64 megapixel Sony IMX682 sensor. The actual camera app is exactly what you'd expect. You've got your standard AI mode, which can analyze your subject and recommend different modes to switch to. So for instance, good old Veronica here. It is suggesting a good bit of portrait scene mode. So let's give that a little tappy tap. This allows you to add a customizable bokeh style effect. And of course you've got the obligatory lighting and beauty modes as well. You've also got a dedicated night mode. And if you go to more, you've got tons of other stuff you can play around with as well. You can shoot at the maximum 64 megapixel resolution. You've got manual controls if you want them as well. And as well as that 64 megapixel primary sensor you've also got an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle option as well if you want a more pulled back view of what's going on and then those other two on the back there are basically just your standard depth and macro sensors and for your home movie needs as well you're shooting in full hd at 30 frames per second by default you can boost that up to 60 frames per second if you like there's also a 4k option uh, but this seems to no, you can do 30 or 60 fps with that so that's good to see and you can shoot video with that ultra wide angle lens if you want but you are stuck at full hd resolution with that one and frankly things look quite grainy and a bit dull uh, certainly indoors that's for sure so that right there in a nutshell is the zt Axon 30 5g and certainly from just having 24 hours to play around with it, it seems like solid value for money and a strong rival to the likes of that poco f3 i'm definitely very impressed by that under display selfie tech the selfie results aren't fantastic uh, as before so if you are a selfie lover you might want to look elsewhere but if you're not really that bothered about the selfie cam you've got that lovely full view display and i've got to say you know kick it back with some movies some games whatever i didn't even notice that little cut out at all so are you tempted by the zt axon 35g it'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below please do plug subscribe ding that notifications bell and have yourselves a fantastic rest of the week cheers everyone love you